Cheaters are everywhere in both the real world and the virtual one. They go around the rules to try and increase their perceived abilities and are often frowned upon. Frequent viewers of my channel know my frustrations against cheaters in GTA Online, so the title of this video might come as a surprise. Let's look at the truth. Do you hate being poor? Do you want to be rich like me? Well, go over to Messy Modding Services where you can buy GTA 5 modded accounts, GTA 5 money, and rank for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Check their website out in the link below. And if you're having doubts, just look at all these happy customers. Okay, I know this video looks like this video by Metpro, but it is different. It just has a similar title for um, reasons. Um, but don't worry, it's not a copycat video. Please don't come after me. If there's one thing that I've learned from uploading content to the internet, it's that you can't expect everyone to have the same level of understanding of something as you. I'll notice this mostly in my videos that do exceptionally well and reach a much wider audience. Take this video, for example. It doesn't have many views and the majority of the viewer base is people that are already subscribed. This means the viewers somewhat know me, my playstyle and the tricks that I use in the game. You can tell us by the comments too. No one's upset that I use BST or suicided and no one's suspicious of my aim because that's what they're used to seeing from my channel. When a video goes further than this, I get a lot of people that don't don't know the reasonings behind the things that I do, which is something that I've learned to predict. In this video, admittedly, I didn't explain properly that the reason I went back to Xbox 360 was to get away from things like the Ultra Cannon and the Oppressor Mark II, not to get away from tryhards or because I was getting beefed too much. So many people misinterpreted this video, but that's my fault. I assumed that people would have understood the point of the video better. God, that actually really triggered me. But let's not get sidetracked. Like with most games, the hardcore players know a lot more than the average casual player. They know more about the game's mechanics and how to use them to their advantage. Take the very simple mechanic sniping in GTA Online. Most people know, point at the target, shoot, and maybe move around a bit so you're a bit harder to hit. And that's about it, right? Well, yeah, for most people, that's all you really need to know. But a hardcore player would probably know all the nuances too. They know the exact damage the guns do with and without BST, and also if your opponent has BST or not, they might know what difference having a helmet makes and how you can still tank a regular bullet in the head if you have BST. Something that a lot of people actually don't know. But what am I getting at? Well, having extra knowledge of the game allows you to make better judgments on the situations that you're in. My knowledge of how damage works in this game allows me to easily identify who's a cheater in a split second. Oh, and of course we've got a hacker. Bro, there's no way. I can't get a break. I mean, in case you wonder, the guy one shot me through BST when he didn't have BST, which is impossible to do. But what happens when you create an assumption based on something you don't have complete knowledge about? Well, there's a high chance you're going to be wrong. I uploaded a compilation of some nice snipes to my TikTok and someone asked if sniping in the game is hitscan or if there's travel time. Now, it's kind of weird, but if you slow it down, you can see that I lead some of my shots. The truth is, if you're far enough away from your target, and especially if your target is moving fast, you have to aim a bit ahead of it to actually hit it. Now, it's weird because there's not a delay if there was real bullet time, but you have to lead your shots as if there was. Now, I don't blame people for not knowing this, but when you're adamant you don't have to lead shots, when there's proof right in front of your face, there's something wrong with you. So, what happens when you counter people like this guy on TikTok who doesn't have a high knowledge of the game and won't admit when they're wrong? What happens when you meet them in game? This encounter happens on 13th of August 2023 at 1 in the morning. There's a yellow CEO in the session called Vitamin and he's going around killing a bunch of people. Anyway, at this point, I'm not really that bothered. There's some other stuff I want to do in the session, so I'll just do my own thing for now. But very quickly, I'm not allowed to do that. Um, so this guy tried to kill me and then just flies away. I'm not having that. So I quickly realised that this guy's not actually that good, he's just a bit of an idiot and just likes to pick fights I guess. But as you might be able to guess, he's not the main character in this story. I'm just trying to set the scene a little bit. So earlier, right after I jumped off my presser, but before I went after the guy, I was in the construction site and Vitamin, god what a stupid name, he goes off radar. Take note of this. I then go and park myself on top of a rooftop, see if I can get the other oppressor guy. There seemed to be a bit of a free mode battle going already, so I didn't mind joining in. I didn't really feel like I was grieving. I didn't record everything, just a few nice kills, but throughout this, Vitamin would go off radar, come over to this area, start killing people in this area, and by the time his off radar's worn off, he's back in his office. 
Eventually I get suspicious of him so I go on top of another rooftop where I can see his office. Now after about 5-10 to 10 minutes since the last clip, he comes out of his office and of course he's off the radar. He might be invisible on the map but the draw distance on PC is pretty good so I can track him pretty well. Now at this point I'm not really that bothered by him so I'm just going to let him do his thing. I am however still keeping him in the back of my mind just in case. Eventually he does reappear on the map but this is where I check his profile for the first time. Turns out he's been vote kicked. This means it's clear people don't want him in the session. Anyway, now that I know this and how he played before, I decided to go over to him in my buzzard and see if I could get a kill on him. His vehicle seems to have some Amani tech on it, so I can't lock onto him, but nothing a little bit of free aim rockets can't stop. Now you guys might find it weird that I'm showing all this boring stuff, I usually cut this out, but for this fight it's quite important, I want you guys to see everything that I've done. But anyway, eventually he goes ghost organisation and then drives into the Rockford Plaza. Now this is actually quite smart of him to do because there's three exits for him to come out of and I can't keep track of all three of them at the same time. I eventually lose track of him because of this. But the good thing is, I don't have to guess which way he comes out of, because in the kill feed, you can see that he kills someone. Now this is important because if I find the person that he killed and where they died, I can guess the rough location of where this guy's going to be. So instead of trying to find him with my buzzard, I decide to go on a rooftop so I can snipe him, because it's a lot easier to scout around. So yeah, all of that build up just for one kill and then he leaves. That can't be the end of it. Well you're right, it's not the end of it. I send him a message saying nice rage quit and that clearly gets into his skin. The first thing he says to me is okay modder. After one kill he's assumed that I'm a modder. I mean yeah I'd understand it if it was obvious but this is just one snipe. But anyway he might use facts and logic, let's hear him out. I say it's called skill, go in the game and he says off radar detected, modder's account because banned many times, thermal glitch is broken so you use a menu, enjoy your L modder. I don't really know what he's trying to get at. Anyway, if there's one thing that should stop him from thinking that I'm a modder, is him seeing my POV. So I ask if he wants to see my POV for proof. And he says, Proof about what? Rank 133 and you use thermal glitch? Again, a trash hard ban for mods. Where is your high rank nerd? Uh, um, what? I didn't even use thermal. He then says, You're a nobody. Just a trash noob with mods and macros. Imagine using a menu to detect off radar. Kill on the roof with a broken thermal glitch. He seems pretty mad. So from that one kill, he's come to the conclusion that I use mods, macros, and the thermal glitch. He doesn't care about the truth either, because when I ask him if he wants to see my proof that I'm not modded, he says, you have no proof. What? Oh, it's like a broken record at this point. I ask again if he wants to see my POV. And to nobody's surprise, he says, you're just a trash noob with a menu. I was off radar and you saw me. Pathetic noob, rank 133. Where's your high rank? Why this modded account? Okay, first off. Being off radar doesn't make you invisible. And also, what's his obsession with my level? Can a level 133 person not kill him? I'm so confused. I asked what mod did I use just to try and get an answer from him, but I realised it's going to go around in circles again, so then I say, say hi to YouTube. Unlucky for him, hopefully I get more than three views on this video. I still don't understand his obsession with my level. I'm only level 130 on my main account, my legit account, the account that I got good on. It's possible for someone with a legit lower level to actually be good. And also just get a snipe like that. Anyway, I then tell him just because he's off radar doesn't mean he's actually invisible. But apparently I'm just a stupid noob. Apparently it's impossible to know the side of the building he chooses to come out of. Now you can see that I was on top of a rooftop when he came out of the agency, so I could just look at the agency and see where his car goes. And then with the Rockford Plaza, I just found where he killed the other guy, and he was right there. Easy. He then thinks I'm lying for some reason, then goes back to the, well, you're just a trash nerd with mods. He seems to think that he's smart because he uses this criteria to determine if someone's modding. So according to this guy, someone is modding if they have a low rank, a low KD, a hidden profile, and sits on a roof with a thermal helmet on. So not if they're using aimbot, not if they're using god mode, anything like that, just those criteria. But yeah, he's the smart one, right. I then ask him to talk in Discord because I think that'd be quite funny, hearing how mad this guy is. He then doesn't want to, so I just say he's scared, and that makes him really upset. It's like, scared about what? You're 14 years old, and you got a tiny cock. Where's your Glock? So yeah, I don't know why he's thinking of 14-year-old's penises, but he says, LMFAO, 
I'm French. It's not my native language. Nobody is scared by a nerd. He said he lives near Nancy. Don't know where that is. He asked me if I want his address. And he tells me to come with a Glock. Tough little girl. So I just hit him with a lot of words for someone who's scared. But this is where he tells me he doesn't have a Discord. And then gives me a phone number. Well, that's what I'm guessing. But if you know with phone numbers, I can't call it if I'm in a different country, if I don't have the country code. I guess he's French, but I tried calling the number and it didn't work. He then says his name is uh, Le Chevalier. Um, don't know what to do with that information. Uh, but then he also says, give me your phone number and your name. Uh... Yeah, so I ask him what kind of phone number it is because I do actually want to call it. I ask him if it's a plus 44 number, which is what they use in the UK. And then he tells me to kill myself and then proceeds to block me, which is funny because I thought he wanted me to call him, but I guess not. I guess he is scared. So I then go on my other account and then I tell him to check YouTube and he says, oh, I've got proof you're a modder because you've got so many accounts. He doesn't realise that creating an account is free. And then we've got some more random drivel. He blocks me on that account, so I got another account, and then he also says, Oh, you're such a modder, you've got more than one account. Again, doesn't realise that you can make accounts for free. But he then blocks me again. So yeah, all of this happened just from that one snipe from a rooftop. And yeah, call me a modder all you want. But the worst part about this is that I offered to show him proof that I'm not modding, and yet he still declined to see it and went on with his own narrative. This has become increasingly more common in GTA Online. Cheaters cheating and not showing proof that they're not cheating when they get called out, and then legit players offering to show proof when they get accused, but the idiots in this game decline to ever accept that someone could be legit. So this fight happens about a month before and I'm testing the Raiju. It was still pretty new at this point and I hadn't really had much time with it. There's a guy called Ours Brun, who I'll call Brun from now on, in a savage below me. Whether you think it was right or wrong for me to try and go for a kill, I don't really care. Save your GTA politics for another video. But either way, I definitely made a tit of myself with that attempt. And now I've basically started a fight for kind of no reason. BST, man. I hate kids like this. Yes, I use BST basically all the time, but only really when the other person has it as well. I don't usually start a fight with someone who doesn't have BST with BST. I can't even go to see you as well. There we go, there's the accusation.
And now Brun says, I've BST, you one shot me. Um, the one shot in question was me hit marking you with marksman rifle as well. But then even if that isn't what this guy was on about, he should clearly know that he's not wearing a helmet and he can get headshotted, especially considering I told him earlier. I think it's also worth mentioning that at this point, I seem to do more damage with my marksman than I've done before. I take off about half of his health from one shot instead of the usual quarter-ish. And I think at this point, he doesn't have BST anymore. Like he might have dropped it and not been able to pick it up. So yeah, that's why I can one shot him from now on. I couldn't before unless it was a headshot, just in case you guys didn't pick it up. Anyway, it's not the end yet. So yeah, he's now left, but I can't let him get away that easily. I've got to send him a message. He does actually end up sending me a response, but when I go to check it, he's not there on my message list. That's because he's blocked me. So this absolute brain box accuses me of modding because he doesn't know what a headshot is. And then when he responds to my message, he also blocks me, so I can't see what he said. This next fight is a pretty similar beginning to the other one. As you can see, it's only about a week earlier, and I'm still getting to crits with the Raiju. My target is Nox, and he's this red dot. Watching how he's been playing in the session before, and I didn't want to take many chances. So, yeah, after one kill, Nox has activated Ghost Organization. And I'm just going to wait this one out. Oh, that is so high IQ. I can't exactly remember why, but I decided to teleport away. Yeah, I know it's kind of cheap, but what happens next is even cheaper. So yeah, my character was frozen, and then my game got crashed. But you know what that means? It's message time! Now, of course, I've got to send him the obligatory mad message, to which he responds with, XDDD. Sure. You think I don't know you're blatantly modding? XDD. Um, okay, I'm going to stop that. I then tell him that he's the one modding, because he probably crashed my game. And then I say, I recorded all my kills, just in case he wants to see them. But then he says, you think I can't see when you god mode toggle and teleport? Well, at least these are real accusations, unlike the ones at the start. But anyway, there's a logical explanation for basically everything. The teleporting wasn't me modding, but was actually a glitch, and then god mode could be something like this. We saw this happen earlier, and it can happen with any legit player. Now, I'm not sure what causes it, but this is likely what he saw. Maybe it's to do with bad connection? I don't know. But look at this. After I hit marker in, he turns around and flops over, just like the Ewo back in the old days. Maybe this is from modding? I don't know. You guys let me know. I then tried to tell him that it was job teleporting, and that I never used god mode. I don't think he believes me, because he just says, alright. I then just say, SGF, you crashed me. Then call him a freak, and he says, GG, have a good night. Now, if he was the guy that crashed me, and he crashed me because he thought I was modding, he's part of the problem. He created a false assumption based on his lack of knowledge, didn't want to accept my explanation, and then crashed my game because he was upset he was losing. Truly pathetic. But this next battle is something I've never experienced before in GT Online, an experience that could affect my reputation forever. The fourth person is me. 
This fight happens on the 9th of August, 2023, just after midnight. Here I'm on my account called Ramsey's Sacrifice, and because it's an account people know, I'm always really wary. I always feel like I've got a tiger on my back, and anyone in the session could be a modder that's after me. Here, I've checked the people in the session to see if it's safe, and I think it is, so it's time for me to go outside. Here I notice a guy that I didn't notice before. His name's Predator and he's on the Presser Mark 2. I pull over just to be safe, but maybe he's friendly. Okay, I guess not. But I really wasn't that bothered about fighting anyone at this point. After I kill him once, I just drive away, because I'm really not that bothered. And it's at this point, conveniently, my game sound goes. Look at you still have my microphone audio, but oh, it's kind of annoying. It seems like Predator wasn't happy that I killed him, so he comes over. Oh, fuck's sake. I do try and drive away, but this guy is really determined to get me. Now you might have missed that, but a red dot teleports in onto a roof. All of a sudden, I'm getting jumped. Oh, please just fuck off. Yeah, fuck you guys. And yeah, I don't really want any of this. I'm really not interested, so I just go passive. But later on, after about 10 minutes, Predator is fighting some of the people in the session. Now, deep down, I still am a little bit of a tryhard, so I go to try and get my kill back. Honestly, you're such a bellin. You're such a fucking asshole. Fucking dick. Oh, piss off, you fucking asshole. Fucking hate this game. So that's kind of weird, and this is actually where the weird stuff starts. Here I go to drop armor, but look at my armor bar. If you didn't catch that, I got armor before I actually picked up my armor. In fact, before I'd even pressed to drop it. But at this point, I just presumed that I'd already dropped armor before, and I just forgot. But then look at that. Both my health bar and my armor bar have just fully reset. I don't really know how this happened, but I'm guessing a modder in the session could give me health? I really don't know. But anyway, if you don't believe me, it's clear from how I play that I didn't expect this to happen. So here I see myself get hit, I go to suicide because I'm playing like a dirty rat, and I have all my health back. Even after I'm dead, you can still see my armor filling up. It's clear I don't know what's going on, but because I'm a piece of shit, I actually take advantage of this. Now, I probably still would have beaten Presa, but what are your guys' thoughts on this? Personally, I think it's a pretty shitty thing to do for me to carry on playing like this when I knew my health was getting modded, but at this point in time, I'm still a little bit annoyed at him for jumping me earlier, so I just wanted to punish him a little bit. But then again, I guess that's what Nox thought earlier. That's probably why he crashed my game, because he wanted to punish me for killing him. Who the fuck is this? But 
But then GTA politics aside, look who leaves the session. The same guy that jumped me with Predator and teleported to that rooftop. But something else happens when he leaves the session. Look at my health bar. I don't have any armor anymore. My health is no longer refilling. And just like that, my fake mods have gone. So yeah, is this a coincidence? Was it Predator's friend who was trying to set me up? Make it look like I was cheating? Only they can know. There seems to be some sort of culture in this game where people call modder too quickly, probably because of the frequency of cheaters combined with people not wanting to admit that someone could be better than them. It's also mainly down to lack of knowledge of the game. Good players will only really call someone a modder if there's no logical explanation for something that they did, such as one shot through both BSC and body armor. Even in my video about GTA's best players, it takes solid evidence to actually accuse them of something, even if I'm suspicious before. In this video by you vs pro, he's suspicious of the players, but doesn't actually accuse them of modding until he's 100% certain. That's like halfway through a 30 minute video. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's I'll the name bar. Wait, wait, wait. I'll throw, I'll throw on his money. Let's give one shot me. Yeah. When I had a helmet. Yeah. No, I'm sure, no, I'm sure. This is what people should be like. They should focus on their facts and not their feelings. Now, whether you think someone is modding or not, the main thing is proof. If someone can show me proof that they're not modding after I thought they were, I'd love to see that. In fact, I'd love to see the POVs of people that I fight and also accuse of modding, but not many people record big chunks of gameplay like me. And if they did, why would they show it to me if they were modding? But the thing I don't understand is that if someone offers to show you unequivocal proof that they're not modding, why avoid at all costs any way of actually seeing the footage? It's like they want to live in denial. Anyway, some people still accuse me of modding, even after seeing my point of view, but I think that is mainly because people aren't familiar with this side of GTA. People can actually be pretty good at this game. But that's it. Do let me know what you think about this topic in the comments down below. I want to have some discussions. But yeah, see you in the next video.